Friday, the 28th of October, and this is how we've come to the end of the Business and Markets Week here on Frontier Opening Bell. I am boosting them off. Let's get you straight into the markets and the South African market for the second day. A very deep dive this week, 1.4%, now just at the threshold of 71. The biggest market on the African continent down nearly 1.5%. The Nairobi stock market down just by 0.02%. The Egyptian market down by 2 0.26%. The BRVM up very strongly back around 210 on the composite by half a percent. And the Nigerian market went up by 0.38%, a bit of a more risk on appetite for the Nigerian boss. Again, we saw earnings from some of the companies uh, reporting third quarter, such as Gerigo Power, lifting investor sentiment for the Nigerian boss. Let's uh, get into East Africa and check in the top story, Safarico. Has finally uh, completed the acquisition of the entire Empesa Holdco shares. That's in the news. And of course, they have the KCB group slipping into the third position or the fifth position uh, as the one of the biggest uh, banking group in uh, Kenya from its uh, third position. It's been overtaken by some of its peers. Tanzania's Serengeti has won the top pack in Africa ranking five times in a row, and that's a whole lot what the Tanzanian tourism is doing there in the East African country. The Bank of Uganda uh, is, has asked banks to eliminate early loan payback fees uh, because the country's banking sector faces a high level of non-performing loans, what are called the MPL. Let's uh, take into West Africa. Uh, let's uh, get into the big stories starting uh, Friday as we go into the weekend. Uh, FMDQ Securities Exchange has renamed the investors and exporters window as a NAFEX. As we saw the Naira fall very sharply, nearly a thousand to the dollar at the official window and a thousand one hundred and fifty Naira to the dollar on the market street. It's been a very nail biting week for Nigeria with dollar scarcity and speculators allegedly hurting the country's local uh, currency. So the investors and exporters window, which was created back around 2016 by the central bank, is now being renamed the Nigeria Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market, allowing everyone, importers, exporters, everyone to play on a level uh, on a level field moving forward. The group power I mentioned a bit earlier, which is the only listed energy producing company on the Nigerian exchange reporting nine months financials, revenue up very strongly 42%, pre-tax profit up 25% at about 17.4 billion in local currency. And news out of his oil and gas yesterday was a rebranding to become his energies. The whole idea is to uh, move it towards sustainable energy, climate friendly operations of uh, unlisted oil and gas company. That's part of the Tony Elimelu's business empire in Nigeria, which include banks, uh, hospitality and leisure, oil and gas, as well as power generation. And, uh, the Lulu Bricks, uh, one of the chairman of uh, uh, Platform Petroleum in Nigeria, one of the big names within Nigeria's Niger Delta, all region says the government should allow merging our players to be part of asset sale deal for the international oil companies that are looking to divest from the uh, country. He had a uh, chat with him here at the African Energy Week on Thursday on that. The United States uh, on Thursday restated its commitment and partnership in terms of policies, funding, investments, and, and other you know, the areas technical as well with the Africa's energy sector. That's, Africa, uh, that's all part of the roundtable on U.S. Africa that was held at the Africa Energy Week uh, uh, as come to a close. And Mali says he's able to raise roughly 26 billion CFA franc from the West Africa Monetary Union financial markets in the current week. Let's uh, take it all up to Southern Africa. Look at the SCRS, which is the revenue service, tightening the screws on compliance to reduce tax gap in the country and close it a lot more. The President of Apostles administration in every dive on rand on the table. South Africa's retail sales are down about 0.5% year on year in August. As we saw news from peak and pay, the shares sank 13% Thursday because the, com the company posted 97.5% decline in its half-year trading period. 
African Bank has announced a green investment in Angola's Cabinda uh, refinery. Angola is pursuing at least, uh, looking at at least four refineries to provide sustainable petroleum products in the Southern African country. And African Energy Week, as I said earlier, has finally come to a close. Thousands of delegates uh, live in South Africa or Cape Town after that very uh, high profile uh, for the conversations around energy independence for the African continent, uh, the development of the industry, as well as partnerships that are needed, uh, including deals that were, uh, that were made, as well as um, partnerships and new projects being uh, sought for investments. Let's uh, get on to North Africa and look at Egypt, looking to issue a 5G network licenses. Uh, later, they said that will be in December. That should help. Uh, uh, Egypt uh, 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 bring in some uh, needed foreign exchange. The Atijari Welfare Bank is looking for further expansion in Egypt, that iconic banking institution between Morocco, Egypt, and a few other North African uh, economies around the Sahel as well. Egypt and China uh, have signed uh, a debt swapping memorandum of understanding for development uh, projects within in North Africa. While Tunisia Airline says it's... Uh, Third quarter revenue went up by 22%. Keep soaring and stay there. That's your headlines for today. From Frontier Opening Bell, I am Bosin Mafayu. Thank you for being part of the show throughout the week. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.